Hey, it's Sri here. In today's video, I'm going to talk you through why you need to stop chasing him if you're going through some really, really difficult times in your marriage and potentially on the verge of a separation or divorce. Now, before I dive in, I know that going through a separation or a divorce is just really, really crushing on so many levels. I know it not only is a difficult place emotionally, but from a practical perspective as well, you know, your whole family's uprooted. There's a whole bunch of changes that are going on in your life. And so I know that that's naturally going to create a, a sense of fear, anxiety, and also overwhelm as well. And so if you are struggling, if you're not sure what to do, not sure what steps to take moving forward, then there may be a chance I might be able to help you on your journey. So if you'd like to speak to me directly, all you need to do is just click on that link below where it says book a call with me. Just click on that link, choose a time that works for you, and then I'll contact you at the scheduled time just so I can learn a little bit more about where you're at right now where you want to get to and how we can bridge that gap as quickly as possible. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click on that bell notification as well so that every week you get access to my latest videos that talk through how to recover from infidelity, how to save your marriage and how to really learn more about male psychology as well. Look, I get it. You know, if your husband has said he wants a separation or a divorce, because something has been taken away from you, in any area of our lives, when something feels like it's been taken away, we're naturally gonna do everything we can to try and hold on to that very thing. And that's very much a primal instinct inside of us. We're wanting to save the marriage. You're wanting to do everything you possibly can to get your husband to realize that he's made a mistake and that he wants to be with you and live happily ever after. So I understand where you're at. The problem is, is that because we're in such an emotional place, in any area of our lives, if we're trying to make decisions from a really emotional place, they often tend to fall flat on its face. I can tell you now that I've made a million decisions in the past on emotion and they've often ended up being really, really poor decisions. My point is, is that I'm really trying to make sure that you're making the best decisions moving forward. And the best way to do that is to make sure that we're in the right emotional space. And so what today's video is about is really providing with a little bit more clarity on the things that you need to be doing if you're in a position where you know you're on the receiving end of infidelity and your husband has wanted a separation or has potentially left you now the first step you need to take is to really own your power now when i use the word power i'm not meaning it in a very controlling or kind of tyrannical way or anything like that it's just about really recognizing that decisions emotions they're all things that are within our control we have the ability to do that as opposed to being reactive to the circumstances, we're choosing to make a decision as to how we're going to react to those circumstances. Now that might sound really simplistic, but the truth is, is that you're going through a really tough time. Now I know it's not as simple as just saying, okay, I'm just going to look at this from a really positive perspective now. Of course not. You know, it's a really difficult place. But if you can mentally, over time, just recognize, you know, I control how I feel about these circumstances, and that I'm choosing to make decisions based on what I want and what I believe is the best thing for my family, for us, etc. Then things start to become more in your control. You really start to take control back and you start to own your power. That's where the transformation really comes in. See, so many people are basically giving their power away to their husband and whatever he does or whatever he says, it then results in them feeling however it is they feel based on how that person is acting and that's when you disempower yourself this is all about empowering yourself so really own your power and recognize that you have the ability to make the decisions that you need to make you have the ability to be able to create the shifts that you're looking for you have the power to be able to determine what the next steps are and you also have the power to decide whether it is a marriage that you truly want or not you're the one taking back control. And we're not doing this in terms of playing games or letting it become some sort of manipulative behavior or anything like that. It's just about saying, you know what? This is my life. I control how I feel and I'm gonna make the decisions that I feel are right for me. And if that's, I wanna be with this man, fantastic. If it's not, that's okay too. Now the second step that you wanna be taking instead of pleading and begging and so on is to imagine what it would be like if you didn't need him. Now I want you to think about that for a second. If your husband has cheated on you, if he said that he wants a divorce or a separation or whatever it is, then there's more than likely going to be a part of you that's going to feel like, no, 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 I, I need you, I, I love you, I love you, I care for you, and I need you as well. Even though we may not necessarily use those words, 
if we're not at a place where we feel like we're gonna be okay without that person, then there is a part of us at a mental level that feels that we need that person. But what I want you to really focus on is reminding yourself that if I didn't need him, how would I behave? How would I act? What steps would I take? What would I be doing? Would I be spending more time doing some more of the things that I love? Would I be spending my time focusing on the things that are important to me at this moment? Would I be able to focus at work? Would I be able to you know, continue on with my gym training or whatever it is for you? How would you operate if you didn't feel like you needed him? Because it's when we need someone, that's when we start to become really attached to them and we just can't see life without that person. But I want you to know that you're actually going to be okay no matter what. So really make sure you take the time to ask yourself, how would I actually operate if I didn't need him? And feel free to post your comments down in the comment section below as well, and I'll make sure I respond to every single one of them. And the third step that you want to be taking is to surrender and let the bread bake. Now, how often do we have a situation where, you know, we've got something that's not quite in our control? And we're sitting there trying to control every little thing. And that includes your husband in these situations. You're doing everything you can to just get him to realize that, you know, he's made a mistake and he shouldn't have done what he's done. And okay, he may have cheated on you, but it's okay. I'm ready to forgive. I'm ready to do whatever it takes to change. But you see, a lot of the time, infidelity and other sorts of behaviors have a cumulative effect. And what I mean by that is that over time, things have gotten to a point in the marriage where that person has gone off and done those things because of a number of the things that have happened over the years. And I'm not saying that this is your fault or anything like that, but the point is, is that often we're trying to get that person to just change. We're saying, all right, we want to forget about the past. We want to forget about all those things and just move forward. But he's emotionally checked out a lot of the time. He's in a place where he doesn't even want to connect with you. And so if you're there trying to beg and plead and do everything you can to try and control the situation, then that's going to further push him away. What we want to be doing is stepping into what we call surrender. Surrender is ultimately about relinquishing your attachment to an outcome. But it's also what we call a powerful non-resistance. It means that we're actually just letting go. And we're trusting that the things that we want are going to happen at the time that it is right for us. Not in a way that our mind thinks, but in a way that it actually needs to happen. We've got to surrender. Just like you go outside and you go and plant your veggies or you plant a tree of some sort, whatever. You don't sit there and just watch it grow over and over and over. You water it, make sure it gets sunlight, the right fertilizer, etc. And then it grows. But you trust that it's going to grow. You're not sitting there trying to control every little step. Or in the case of baking, if you put something in the oven and you continue to just keep opening up, it's going to take longer to cook. And it's the same thing here. We want to surrender. You see, when we step into true surrender, we embrace what we call our feminine energy. And when we step into our feminine, what happens is we just let go. And we trust that God or the universe, whatever it is, has a power that's greater than anything that we can conceive in our own mind. So we let go and we trust. And then we let our intuition guide us. If there's a part of us that says, okay, I need to say this, you trust it. Whatever it is that your intuition is guiding you on, you trust it. And incredibly what happens is that things unfold in a way that are often different to how we conceive in our mind, but they're often better than what we thought. And that's the magic of surrender. Now the thing is, is often people find it quite hard to differentiate between what their intuition is, what their mind is telling them, and so on. Now I understand that, and that's where what we need to be doing is really creating the healing, really letting go of fear, really letting go of all the negative beliefs and the anxiety, so we know more what it's like to actually connect in with our true self. Now if you're in a place where you're struggling to figure that out, you don't know what to do, you haven't quite been able to create the emotional shifts that you're looking for, then I understand completely, and that's exactly why I've created my Authentic Relationship System training program. Because what it does is it helps you to create the shifts internally within you. And as you do that, then what's going to happen is you're going to show up in a completely different way because you've created the emotional shifts that you need to on the inside. So if you are in a place where you're struggling, you're not sure what to do, and maybe the help that you're getting right now isn't quite doing it for you, 
then I'd love to be of service to you. So all you need to do is in the description section below, just click on that link which says book a call with me. Just click on that link, choose a time that works for you, then I'll contact you at the scheduled time just so I can learn a little bit more about where you're at, what you've maybe worked on in the past and how we can go about really creating some of the shifts for you on this journey of yours. If you're not quite ready to speak to me yet, that's totally fine. What I encourage you to do is just register for my free masterclass training below. There's a link there and that training is basically there to help you to understand a little bit more about how my client Sarah was able to save her marriage in less than 60 days using these three really important steps. You'll really enjoy the training so just click on that link where it says register for the masterclass, just choose a time that works for you and then just come along with an open mind and make sure you stick around to the end and I'll make sure I give you a free gift that I know you'll really really enjoy. Thank you so much for watching this video, if you've liked it make sure you hit the like button below if you want to get more videos like that, hit the subscribe button. And do let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this video as well. I always love reading the comments and the questions, so just make sure you write them below and I'll respond to every single one of them. And if you want to learn how to save your marriage on the brink of divorce, just click this video above. And if you want to learn how to stop emasculating a man, just click this video above. Thank you so much and I'll talk to you in the next video.